Currently driving a Holden Rodeo. This is a 2007 model. It has intermittent uh, issues with fuel rail pressure. So at times it drives absolutely perfect and then other times with no um, direct comparison in regards to the parameters. It can be hot, it can be cold. The customer is experiencing a loss of power and the engine light comes on. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you what that cause was and how we um, rectified that. Okay, so first of all, a background on this vehicle. It uh, presented in the workshop a number of weeks ago and fault codes P0089, P1093 <coughs> and P0087 was logged. They're all related to fuel pressure performance and the fuel rail pressure too low. So what happened was the vehicle was running good, faults were cleared, customer, um, basically wanted to bring it away, uh, monitor it and see how it went from there. Uh, we didn't do any testing on the day, but today it's back. It had a engine light flash on and it also had a running issue uh, a couple of times since then. I have now plugged it in since and P, uh, what was the code? P0089 fuel rail pressure performance is the only code that has come back again. So. It's an intermittent problem. I've been driving this for a little while already this morning. It hasn't replicated. I have been monitoring the fuel rail pressure on the test drive and I have found no issues there. Okay, so first of all, on the road test, I wasn't able to determine a fault. I was checking the actual versus desired fuel rail pressure and nothing was happening out of the ordinary. I did have a chat with the customer and this time the customer decided that he wanted a further investigation. So I was cleared to do a bit deeper of diving even though the fault wasn't present again when I was looking at it. So the analysis this time is gonna be based straight off the code that has been flagged, which is P0089, fuel rail pressure performance. Now, why would that code get flagged and what is the possibilities of that code what are the issues that could be causing it that's what we need to concern ourselves with so that's the first thing p0089 can be flagged and is flagged when the ecu detects that the fuel rail pressure sensor slash rail is outside of spec so the information that we can get from that is the ecu is monitoring the fuel rail pressure sensor to determine if the desired versus the actual are within spec at some stage that went outside of spec and we need to know what are the possibilities for that happening. Well, obviously one of the possibilities is fuel, whether there's a restriction, a blockage, a bad filter or bad fuel could cause a fuel rail pressure performance code to flag. The other one is the actual pump itself could cause it. And then we also have the fuel pressure regulator aka suction control valve so we have those potential possibilities and we need to do a bit deeper dive in to see what could be causing this issue okay so off camera i did do a few checks the fuel was one of them that i checked um to see if there was any issues there couldn't find anything out of the ordinary didn't see any bad fuel any bad mixture of fuel or any kinks any blockages in the pipes or anything like that to um, rule that there was any fault in that area. So having been given the clearance by the customer, I decided to go after that fuel pressure regulator, AKA suction control valve. A fuel pressure regulator is exactly as it sounds. It regulates the fuel to keep the correct flow at all different load conditions entering the pumping chambers. So with that in mind, if we had a sticking issue with this suction control valve, that would give us the exact code that was being flagged and the conditions that the customer was experiencing, which is a restriction in performance and a hesitation at times. So customer giving the go ahead, decided to make enough room around this part, taking off some of them hard line uh, pipes, 
some of the flexible hoses and getting access directly down there. I did also do a circuit check just to make sure that the command was going down there and that the suction control valve was capable of being open and closed um, as you would expect from the ECU. That was fine, so that was also another reason why I wanted to do a visual inspection of the part. Now, when you do have enough things removed, it's only held in by two bolts. They are two hex heads and they're very easy to remove when you have enough space. This part then comes out and I can do my own bench test on it from there. So the bench tests I did on the suction control valve were as following. I did an ohms resistance check across the terminals to see if it was within spec and it was. That um, 2 ohms to 3.5 ohms of resistance is roughly where you should be expecting these to be. The other one is the commanding test. So you want to command to see if this valve is capable of opening and closing. Now on a bench test like this, I have my wires just hooked up on the underside and I have a battery source here, which I have hooked up to positive and I'm going to tap this on and off on the negative terminal. What's going to happen with a functioning one is you're going to see it open and close. So. And with a duty cycle command to give the correct amount of pressure depending on load conditions, you would see this fluctuate really quickly on and off as required by the ECU. Now, what are the other checks that we can do on this? The other easy check that I very much wanted to do was take that sir clip out and have a visual inspection of what the inside of that little chamber looks like. And as you could see here, when I did that on the bench at work, I was able to visually see the scoring and damage that was along the outside of that. Having that clear visual of that part gave me a direction that I wanted to uh, replace that component 100%. I advised the customer I had found where, and I advise them this 100% could be causing the issue. If this valve was getting stuck and the scoring showing that it could be, this would be causing all of the issues. So with that, I go ahead and order the part. And when the part comes, I go about installing it. Now, this is a Ford JJ1 engine. So this is an Isuzu engine. It's in Rodeos, it's in Colorados, it's in D-Maxes, it's in um, MUXs, I believe. It's also in Nissans. Even the part number on the box was a Nissan part number that came, which I believe is the Navara Pathfinder and potentially a Patrol. But this engine is in a lot of vehicles, a three liter engine. So if you're having this issue and you have one of these engines, I would strongly advise accessing that and doing the same. Now, after everything was fitted back together, I also did a fuel filter replacement as well. I advised the customer it's good practice. It was quite a long time since the fuel filter was replaced. So we did that as part of this service. Bled the system and then it was time for a road test. Just coming off the final road test now. The suction control valve all back in. It is primed up and the vehicle is running with no issues. I have been monitoring the live data here. So the fuel pressure desired, fuel rail, and the voltage going to sensor, everything has been good. This was an intermittent fall, but when we stripped down that suction control valve, we could see the scoring on the internal side on that valve so we knew that that needed to be replaced regardless listen when you have issues like this mechanical inspections can be very valuable sometimes you just got to get in there and see if you can find any issues same thing when i had a ranger a number of years ago removing a banjo bolt gave access to a little strainer on the end of that bolt and I was able to find some blockages there which was causing performance issues on one of those. So never rule out a visual inspection even when it requires removal of some components. It can be the best thing to do at times. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful and informative. If you did, please like, share, comment and subscribe and I hope to see you in the next one.
Thanks for watching.